and click on the bell icon to never miss learning from Vedanti. Move on to walls, container walls. Uh, what are the different types of walls which are there? Supposing you have gas 1, gas 2 and there is a wall which is separating these two gases. What kind of wall is this? Is it, al the, is it allowing temperatures to flow from one end to the other or exchange of temperature is this flow? Energy is possible between these two gases. Depending upon that, we have what? Two types of walls. See here. There are two types of walls, diothermic, thermic, diathermic it is, diathermic, adiabatic, diathermic wall, adiabatic wall. More of this you are going to study in thermodynamics, because here it is only an introduction. If there are any problems based on this, we can use this concept, okay. So in a diathermic wall, the separation which allows the flow of heat through it, supposing you, ga you have gas 1 at say, 300 Kelvin, gas 2 at 270 Kelvin, there is temperature difference. After some time, we see that both of them are maintained at certain temperature which is between these two. So there is exchange of heat here. That is possible and we call it as diathermic wall. Okay. And in this adiabatic wall, adiabatic is insulated. It doesn't allow heat to pass through. Heat to pass through it. So if there is no exchange of heat between these two. So here that is separation which does not allow flow of heat at all. Okay, so that is a diathermic wall. Now thermal equilibrium, if this is the case, first one is the case, wherein heat is exchanged between these two gases, then till when it is going to happen? Till the time both the gases attain the same temperature. When they attain the same temperature, we say that these two gases are in thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium. Okay. Equilibrium with reference to temperature. Equilibrium is something after which no change is going to happen. In this case, we don't to see any change in temperature once the equilibrium state is reached. Okay, so there is no exchange of temperature energy because both the gases are at the same temperature. We say that they are in thermal equilibrium. That is what is thermal equilibrium. Okay, so now supposing the example which I gave you T1 greater than T2, I said this is 300 Kelvin, this is 270 Kelvin. Naturally, T1 is greater than T2, then in that case heat flows from T gas 1 to gas 2 like this. Heat flows from gas 1 to gas 2. Now supposing it is the other way around. This is 270, the other one is 300. Then we know that heat flows from gas 2 to gas 1. Okay. Now supposing heat T1 is equal to T2, then what happens? Thermal equilibrium. No change in heat. Net flow of heat is not there. Okay? That is equilibrium, thermal equilibrium state. This is called as law of thermodynamics, zeroth law of thermodynamics. Okay? This is uh, our uh, uh, you know, doctors use the thermometers and all. It is based on this law, zero at law of temperature. Okay. Heat flows from one object to the other which are in contact till they attain thermal equilibrium. So when they attain thermal equilibrium, we are going to see the temperature. Isn't it? So that is how it happens. Now let us move on to the other one. Second video, third one, ladder. volume we finish, temperature, this is the third one, pressure. So the molecular collisions of the gas or the walls of the container or anything which it comes in contact results in force being applied. What happens is when a gas is confined to a container, because the gas molecules are moving all the time, they are going to collide with the walls of the container, isn't it? 
like this. The wall is going to experience some kind of force. Okay, this force per unit area is called as pressure. So that is what force being applied. Linear momentum. Momentum P is equal to force into time. Force upon time, not force into time. Or you can even write it as M into V. That is also there. Okay. So rate of change of momentum is called as force. But in chemistry, more meaningful is force per unit area. What is the force on the walls of the container per unit area? We call it as the pressure. This is force. Rate of change of momentum. Okay. That also should be there. This force per unit area. The force applied per unit area is called as pressure. And that is the reason force is generally has the SI unit of Newton. Area is meter square. Newton per meter square. That is the unit of pressure. Okay. Newton per meter square is generally called as pascal. This one. One bar pressure is equal to 10 to the power 5 pascal. Okay. Newton per meter square is equal to pascal. Okay. This is one bar pressure is equal to 10 to the power 5 pascal. One atmosphere, this is what I was telling. There is some slightly different things. One atmosphere is equal to 1.01325 bar. Or one bar is equal to, you can even convert that. One upon that. Both you can keep. Zero point nine eight six atmosphere. Very small difference. We can almost equal to one atmosphere we can write, isn't it? That is the reason they are generally used interchangeably in TP and STP. And tor is also used. It is mm millimeter. And this much pressure is equal to 760 mm of mercury. Why do we say 760 mm? We will see just now. Okay. Both is... Huh. Conversions you have learned now? Yes. But in chemistry we want both. In fact, we want all the three. Passicles, atmosphere, bar and even tar. Tar is nothing but M. All these we use. Okay? Right. Then we will see how we get this value. From where it is coming. Now consider the same two gases separated by a wall. It is a movable wall. I can move it this side or this side. Okay, so now if P1 pressure exerted by this gas is more than P2, pressure here is more, what it does? It will push this one to the right, am I right? It is pushed like that. If pressure P1 is greater than P2, correct? What happens when you boil water? Till the time it starts boiling, nothing happens to the lid. Once it starts boiling, it is going to push this lid up. Now that means the pressure inside here is more than the atmospheric pressure. That is the reason it is pushing. Correct? So the same thing happens here. The wall is pushed towards this. Opposite happens. If P2 is greater than P1, it is pushed to the left. But if the pressure remains the same, no motion of the wall, it will not. 
Okay, now if I take this, a gas is there. Okay, take for example, a gas is there. There is a piston here. There is a gas here. This is atmospheric pressure, P atmosphere. This is gas pressure, P gas, inside. If P gas is more than P atmosphere, what happens to this piston? Where, sh where it should move? Which direction it should move? Down or up? P gas is more. Gaseous pressure is more. Here inside the pressure is more than the outside pressure. It should move up. It will go till the time the gas in pressure inside is equal to outside pressure. That will move. So till the time P gaseous is equal to P atmosphere. The opposite happens if the gas pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure, isn't it? Same thing here also. Are you able to follow this? Yes. Correct. Now let us take up another one. They have given area of cross section here. It's something related to movement, no? It moves till when? It moves, the piston will move. Till when it is going to move? Further, there is no movement. At that time we say that it is in mechanical equilibrium. Something piston, it is related to the movement of the piston. Ah, yes, atmospheric pressure is equal to P gaseous. At that instant we say that it has acquired mechanical equilibrium, therefore no further movement. But in terms of gas pressure, it is this. The condition to attain mechanical equilibrium is this. P gaseous is equal to P atmosphere. Correct? Yes. Okay. Measurement of pressure. It's raining so heavily. <clears throat> Let us take up the measurement of pressure, I mean gas, gas pressure. Very simple setup. Here you will know how it is, the value has come. Okay. Let us consider a glass beaker filled with certain liquid to this height. This is the height. Some liquid is there. Density of the liquid is rho. Density is mass by volume, correct? Then what is the volume of, of the liquid? It is the area of cross section of this beaker into height. That is the volume, isn't it? Yes or no? Huh, yes, area of base into height. That is correct. That is what it is. Area of base is A into height, that gives you the volume of the liquid. Now we know the volume of the liquid, we know the density of the liquid, we can calculate mass of liquid, isn't it? Density into volume, that is what it is. Density into volume, density d a into h is the volume. Now force applied, what is that force that is being applied? It is acted upon by some force, its own weight, isn't it? That is equal to mg mass into acceleration due to gravity. This is force applied. Then what is this force is here is equal to m is the mass of the liquid. We have to substitute for that. When you substitute you will get this. Rho area of cross section height of the liquid column into acceleration due to gravity. This is the force. Now what is pressure? Pressure is equal to force upon unit area. So if you if you substitute for force here, which is rho A H G, 
divided by area of cross section. Area gets cancelled, you will get rho g h. Therefore, pressure P in a given column of liquid is given by rho g h, wherein rho is the density, g is acceleration due to gravity, h is the height of the liquid column. Okay, very important. This you have to remember. All these in fact. Okay? Right. Devi Prasad? You did it? No, move ahead. We have found a relation between the pressure and the density of the liquid which we have taken. Ma'am, how did we get the mass as P H? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mass is actually the force. The force that is acting here is the weight itself, isn't it? Weight. Yes. Weight of this is acting. That weight is mg. Mass into acceleration due to gravity. Just like if mea, a normal linear motion, in this case it is downwards, isn't it? Weight. So in this case it is mg. From here we got it. The PAH we got it from MG. Yes. We substituted for mass here from this rho HG. Mass of the liquid is rho HG, isn't it? Force applied is equal to MG. So for this M you have to substitute from this equation. Okay, this M. Okay, so we use the density equal to mass by volume and we cross multiplied yeah. and found mass. That is true. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Very important one. Now we will use this equation to find out this. I think this was next one. This is the one which we use here. I have come ahead probably. Oh. Ah, P atmosphere is rho GH. I wanted to show you where exactly we have this one. Hmm. This is the okay. Now let us take this one. This is a setup used to calculate the atmospheric pressure. Okay. What is this? This is called as barometer. You may have studied this. Okay, like this. Measurement of pressure. How to calculate the pressure of a gas in different tools. First one is the barometer. Monometer is used for to calculate the pressure of gases. This is for atmospheric pressure. Okay. Now in this case, we have got a trough containing mercury. And we are going to invert a tube. Okay which is an evacuated tube, which is empty actually, and that is inverted on this mercury. Now mercury inside there is nothing, isn't it? Downward there is pressure. Now this mercury is going to rush up to this uh, tube till the time the pressure acting here and then this liquid column which supports that they are equal. Okay, and what is this height? This height is 760 mm. That is what is shown here. See here. This is the height to which it is going to rush to. Okay, this is the atmospheric pressure which is acting over here. Now pressure inside this tube is, is almost nothing. So from higher pressure to the lower pressure, in this case it is going to rush till the time the pressure inside this tube is equal to the pressure outside. Right? And what is the height it is going to move up till. So that is what is measured. 
Okay. Using this equation, we will be able to calculate the atmospheric pressure. We should be knowing the density of mercury. The height we should be able to measure from here. And this acceleration due to gravity, that is a constant value. Okay. So like this. This is what. Ma'am. Hmm. Yes. Uh, no, no, no. Why didn't we take water instead of mercury? Hmm. If you take water, the density of water is almost 1 upon 13. So low it is. Density of mercury is 13 point something. Okay, see here. Somewhere, yes. Density of mercury is 13.6. Then gram per centimeter cube is 58. The density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. Okay, if the atmospheric pressure if it equals at 760 mm in case of mercury into 13.6, that much height it will which is very, very difficult to manage. The height of the liquid column will be too high. Okay? That is the reason we don't use water. In fact, we can use any liquid. Only difficulty is the difficulty is we won't be able to manage the height of the liquid column to through which it is going to move. That is a good question, Devi Prasad. You followed this? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Any any liquid can be used. Only difficulty is this. So therefore, we choose a liquid which has got very high density, so that the liquid to through which it is going to rise, the height through which it is going to raise, is manageable. Okay. Yes, sir, no? Yes, sir. So now we let us substitute in this, okay? Simple setup. Mercury has raised to a height of 760 mm. Then substitute the values. 13.6 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube, you have to substitute. 9.8 meter per second. Then, of course, the other one, uh, this height. That is 760 mm, which is equal to 76 meters, centimeters, which is equal to 0 0.76 meter. Okay, because all the others are in SI units, substitute this also in meters. When you do the calculation, you will get this much. 1.013 into 10 raised to 5. Okay. What is the atmospheric pressure is one atmospheric pressure. So one atmospheric pressure should be equal to 1.013 into 10 raised to 5 pascals. Okay, this is how you get that value. Okay, this one you will do. You know, supposing you take a huge tube like this, you put some water, okay, and then you will see that both the ends, the level is the same, correct? Yes, sir. Right. Unless you tilt it on or something like that. So it, if you hold it vertically upwards, then the pressure, I mean the level of the liquid will be like this. Okay. Now this is a principle which we are going to use if it is mercury. Okay. So then uh, generally we take mercury because as I told you in the last class, that will give you a comfortable height for the liquid, for one atmospheric pressure. Okay. So, this is the YouTube and you add water, you can test. This is how, uh, you know, people in olden days, when they were doing this, uh, you know, flooring and all those things, they used to test, taking the YouTube and all those things. You must have seen all those old people, mm -hmm. just to see. Yes, yes so now also we have, we have that to, uh, like if carbon dioxide, we need to put, uh, mm -hmm. put in lime water to turn it milky. Mm -hmm. Yes, to that you direct the CO2 gas we use it. Correct. It is there in the lab. It is the same instrument. Okay. Only thing is we use liquid mercury. Mercury is one of is not available. It is very difficult to fetch. So generally earlier we used to use, I have demonstrated this in the school and all. 
we used to have a mercury container and all those things nowadays it is not there okay i am speaking about long time back okay so now supposing this is the gas which we have prepared in the lab okay say hydrogen gas we have prepared and we have collected in a vessel like this we want to find the pressure of this gas what do we do we just connect it to the manometer this is the manometer barometer is for atmospheric pressure which we did last class we just inverted the u tube am i right a small tube there so and the mercury went up to this level which was about 76 cm correct this is the barometer yes. and this one is barometer in conjunction with the gas that we want to find out the pressure of that is the one okay so this is uh, the gas container so when you open the tap here if the pressure of the gas is more than the atmospheric pressure then what happens it is going to push this mercury to other side but in the present case the valve is open to exert the pressure here in, the, in this case this mercury is pushed towards this side that means what atmospheric pressure is more than the gas pressure am i right yes ma'am okay so if the atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure of the gas then the column height h is seen on the left hand side of the tube this is the h okay so this much if you actually want to find out the pressure of the gas what happens is this is actually the pressure due to this column mercury column isn't it this is also going to exert pressure so that we all also have, we have to take into consideration so atmospheric pressure is equal to pressure of the gas plus some value what is that value the height of the mercury column rho g h this one. okay so then pressure of the gas can be easily determined by this one you have to subtract this rho g h from the atmospheric pressure okay that's all so in this case rho g h is given by pressure due to height simple uh, setup okay potential energy yeah potential energy it is the same as potential energy correct okay so this is the first one what if the it is you know more uh, gas pressure is more then it is going to push it to the other side in that case we will have to add the rho g h that's it see here this is the height of the equation now atmospheric pressure is lesser so if you add this value to atmospheric pressure then we will get the gas pressure okay this is how we determine the pressure of the gas in the lab using manometer yes okay, sometimes small questions or problems could be asked based on this but you can do it in easily okay if you know the you know this concept of pressure difference and which way it is going to move that's it okay yes this i think the left out in the last class ha huh. there is a small problem let us do it what is the pressure of the gas inside the following apparatus i will show you the apparatus it is in the next page let us read the question in mm of mercury if outside pressure is 750 mm and the height of the mercury column is 25 cubic cm sorry 25 cm okay this is the apparatus so it is showing that gas pressure is more than the atmospheric pressure that is the reason it is pushing it to the other side okay pressure of the gas is equal to atmospheric pressure plus rho g h okay so outside pressure atmosphere in the sense it is showing that outside pressure is this much 750 750 mm plus 250 mm this you have to convert this okay of mercury Why is it in mm? mm? They are, they can either give it in mm or centimeter, or m uh, centimeter, or uh, generally it is given like that. Tor is also given for mm. All these values we use to express the pressure. Okay, and later in later calculations and all. when we come to ideal gas and deviations from ideal gas there and all we use pascal that is a si unit of uh, pressure, pressure. 
Yes, this we use that. Otherwise, the, in all these things, wherever it gets cancelled, pressure and all, there we use whatever convenient unit you want to use, you can use. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Because it is directly measured in terms of height. That it is. Okay, yes. So this is uh, about this. You just have to convert that and simple one, isn't it? Pressure of the gas is yes, equal to 1000 yes. mm of mercury. If this you can convert to any value you want. Okay, 1000 mm of mercury. Say for example, you want to convert it into atmosphere. You can do that. 760 mm is equal to 1 atmospheric pressure. Correct. So therefore, 1000 mm is equal to, you can convert. 1000 divided by 760. Some value you will get. And that you can convert it into Pascal. One atmospheric pressure is equal to 1.0013 into 10 to the power 5 Pascal. So these many atmospheres are very easy, isn't it? Yes, sir. So this comes to about 1000 divided by 760. Comes to around 1.31. 1.31 atmosphere. Okay, like that. Later on, you can convert this. So, this pressure inside the apparatus is 1000 mm of mercury, while the outside pressure is 750 mm. Okay, that is the simple question. So, then, uh, huh, this is another question. If mercury, this is the question which he was asking. David Presser. Okay, if Mercury is replaced with water. What is the height of the water column that would be equivalent to 76 mm of mercury? Okay. Yes, ma'am. The density of mercury is 13.6. This is what I was telling him. We will have to multiply it by 13 times. You have to multiply I mean, by 13. Okay. Add 13 times otherwise. So, row of water. Density of water is this much. Okay. Rho G H. Pressure P is equal to rho into G into H. So which will be mercury and this one. So height of mercury a water column we will see this we know. Height of mercury column we know which is 76 mm and if you divide it you will get this. 1033.6 centimeter of mercury column. Okay, 76 centimeters, this one is this much. Okay, 76 into almost 13.6 if you do, you will get almost this value. Okay, in the exam, this kind of questions are asked more now. In the mm -hmm. you know the examination, this kind of questions because it is application based. It is an application based question. That is the reason. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Right. We will right. This is done. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let us take up this one. A mercury column of of length ten centimeter is trapped in a capillary tube between a gas sample and atmospheric air. Okay, this is the gas sample. This is atmospheric air. Initially, the mercury column is under equilibrium. Calculate the gas pressure in these two, in three cases. Tube is kept open with end up. Kept with open and down. Open and up like this. Open and down like this. Tube is kept at an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal. Okay, like this. This is 45 degrees. So, what is the pressure? That is what we are supposed to find out. Good question, it is. But I have not seen this kind of question in chemistry. Right? But it is a good question. Let us take it up. Okay? Yes. Hmm. This one. So this is the mercury col column here. This is acted upon by atmospheric pressure from the top 
and from the bottom it is acted upon by gas pressure okay pressure of the gas is equal to atmospheric pressure plus this because it is below the centimeter all this is being acted upon this by this gas pressure okay so when it is like this that is the open end that is at the top that is it is kept open and up like this yes ma'am right this is 76 plus 10 we will get 86 but what if you are getting if you you know make it uh, open and down in that case the gas pressure which is not being acted by all this okay so pressure of the gas plus 10 cm of mercury that will be equal to atmospheric pressure in this case because it is opposite to what we saw there yes correct it, it has to balance then uh, this much 66 pressure of the gas is this much and if it is kept that is interesting actually 45 degrees like this okay so then rho gh that we were considering isn't it for pressure so in this case rho gh when you consider this is uh, h sin theta you yeah, you have to add that one so if you add that one then we will get this one rho rho g h sin theta it is or i think you have to substitute for it rho g sin theta so it is like this so if you add that i will give you the, here it is yes it is h sin theta correct let it go it is simply h sin theta Okay. If you add that one, then you will get sin forty five is one by root two. Sin forty five is equal to cos forty five. Both are one by root two, isn't it? So if you add that, we will get this. So in this particular case, I think we are getting maximum value here when it is at forty five degrees. It is in this is eighty three, and the first one is eighty six. effective height acting on the gas is b its sin theta component like this this component okay yes ma'am right okay so this is about the determination of pressure now let us come to the two base topic that is gas class simple ones the boils law charles law and all those things we have to see so what is the relationship between pressure volume temperature and all those things so when we consider a gas we had done uh, the assumptions of ideal gas uh, no, isn't it in, in, yes we have done it we have all that okay. in this elastic in nature yeah. intermolecular yes. distances yes yes even if you do not know it is okay because as of now when you are studying this gas class we don't know the difference between what is a real gas and what is a ideal gas isn't it so to uh, yeah, to imagine such a gas itself will be a hindrance to study this gas class that is what i feel okay any gas should be behaving like that and finally we come to know that it's not behaving like that and then we start giving an explanation okay so even if we had not done it would not have Oh, uh, you know, hinder you to study this. Okay, that's okay. If you have studied, that is perfectly fine. So now you have a gas sample here. Gas molecules are there. So we need four parameters: pressure, volume, temperature, and number of moles to describe this gas. Correct. What is the pressure exerted by the gas? What is the volume occupied by the gas molecules? What is the temperature at which it is maintained? what is the amount of the gas that has been taken okay all these things now if i keep i have got four parameters pressure volume temperature number of moles i can keep two come as a fixed one i can fix two of them now say for example i have got this gas okay say i this is an open uh, vessel open vessel means pressure has to remain constant because it is open to atmospheric pressure correct and yes, then i maintain it maintain it at say 25 degrees that is i just keep it on the table in your lab 
okay so that means i have kept pressure constant temperature constant okay like that we can take a closed vessel when i take a closed vessel volume should remain constant okay so when i take a fixed amount of the gas say i take one mole only then n is fixed you have kept this as constant like that we can do all these variations okay soon you will see that out of four if we keep two constant two parameters constant then we are going to get a relationship between the other two okay and based on that different uh, um, scientists have done carried out these experiments and they were we have different names first one is boyd's law wherein in this case temperature remains constant number of moles remains constant so therefore we get a relationship between pressure and volume because those are not kept constant correct then you have charles law see here pressure remains constant number of moles remains constant so we get a relationship between volume and temperature like this so like this we have got four different laws let us take up these laws one by one explain boyle's law what is boyle's law it gives a relationship between pressure and volume when temperature and number of moles remain constant okay so in this case say for example i have got this container okay it has some gas is there okay it has occupied this much volume and i have got a piston about that about that okay so now this is gas let me say the volume occupied by, by this gas initially is v1 and the pressure exerted by this gas is p1 now what do i do i put some weight here some big you know weights you put what happens the piston will move down isn't it we have applied pressure here so we have increased the pressure the piston will move down till here okay now what happens volume has decreased so this is v2 and the pressure now new pressure is v2 okay so therefore when we have increased the pressure volume has decreased if you remove this weights one after the other the piston is going to move up that means you have decreased the pressure volume is going to increase so the, but i have kept i am not i am not adding any gas here the amount of the gas has been kept constant and i have not changed the temperature okay so this is what is boyle's law so according to this law for a given mass of a gas this is very very important amount of substance should remain constant we cannot change that if you change that this law is not applicable okay for a given mass of a gas at constant temperature the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to volume if pressure increases volume decreases that is all okay this is the law so if you remove this proportionality constant what do we get p is equal to k divided by yes okay so this is the so where k is the proportionality constant or you can cross multiply and keep it as p v is equal to constant okay when you multiply pressure and and volume we will get a constant value so that means i have got two values here initial p1 v1 final p2 okay when i multiply these two it should be equal to this that is the reason p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 so this is what is boyle's law very important relation okay this is answered so, so in questions they give us this that the uh, mass hmm. of the gas and the temperature is constant then we use this relationship ha huh, but they will not tell you that directly okay you have no. to somehow yes somehow find out that okay uh, the amount of the substance has been kept constant so temperature is also constant so it has to be boyle's law okay so i have seen questions based on this in competitive examinations children won't come to know that it is boyle's law that they have to use the simple relation p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 okay so that you have to um, apply and read the question once or twice right yes ma'am okay let us move on to 
there is a question. I think. These graphs are very, very important. Then you have this PV. P is proportional to 1 by V. And then you have PV is equal to constant. All these relations at constant temperature. Okay. Now you see here, pressure versus 1 by V. When we draw this graph, you are going to get this kind of graph. Okay. What is this? Each graph is an isotherm. When we are carrying out this experiment at this temperature, throughout the experiment, the temperature has remained constant. But the experiment has been conducted at three different temperatures. Okay? So, these three different graphs we have got. They will ask you, what is, which of the following is correct? T3 greater than T2 greater than T1 or T1 greater than, like that. Okay? Four options will be there. You will have to find out what is, which is the highest temperature, then comes what. Okay? So for that, I have some students finding it a little difficult to identify from the graph. So easiest way of doing that is, so we have a simple relation that when temperature increases, volume also increases. This is our, exp uh, our observation, isn't it? There is expansion which is going to happen when temperature increases, volume increases, correct? Yes. yes sir. So what you do is, you just draw a horizontal line here. Now this is 1 by V highest value. This is second highest value. This is third highest value. Uh, in the sense, this is the highest value. 1 by V is highest. So V should be least, isn't it? Yes or no? 1 by V is highest here. This is the highest value. If you, if you go like this, correct? V should be least here. So that means this temperature here, T1, must be the lowest temperature. Yes. Are you able to follow this? Okay. Like this, if you get confused, you can use this analogy. Okay. So this will help you that way. And this graph is very, very important. Very good. Slope yeah. of the graph, no? No. Slope of the graph, is, it steepens, isn't it? As the temperature increases. Right? It is yes, steepening here. Yeah. That is also there. So this kind of graph. But when you draw a graph of pressure versus volume, we should be because as pressure increases, volume decreases. Am I right? So we have to draw this one. Okay? As volume in decreases, pressure increases. This kind of a graph we will be expecting. Correct? We will not get this kind of a graph, but rather you will get this kind of a graph. Pressure versus volume, hyperbolic graph you will get, like this. Okay? This kind of a graph is not found. This is the actual experimental result. Why it is like that? Let us see. Okay? So forget about this part. We will come to this later. It is not necessary here. Okay? Yes. And then, supposing if I draw a graph of, say for example, I will draw a graph of PV versus P at some temperature, say T1. Okay? What kind of graph do you get? PV is equal to constant, isn't it? Yes. So you will get a graph like this. It is a constant growth. Okay? This is T1. And another graph, T2. If it is carried out at another temperature, T3, what is the relation? PV is equal to constant. This value itself will increase at higher temperatures. So again, T3 greater than T2 greater than T1. Okay? Like that. This. And what is and isotherm? Isotherm means, iso means same. Therma is something related to temperature. Constant temperature graphs are called as isotherm. This one. Okay, these graphs which are plotted at constant temperature are called as isotherms. So, whatever the graph that we plot using Boyle's law or graph for Boyle's law, they are all isotherms because their temperature is kept constant. Okay, so all these, this, this graph is an isotherm. This is an isotherm. These two are two different temperatures, isn't it? But under uh, as each line, for each line that temperature remains constant, therefore they are called as isotherms. 
the graphs which are plotted at constant temperature they might ask this okay in the class exam what are our isotherms graphs which are plotted at constant temperature they are called as isotherms okay